Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson and I'm here once again in the office, our super best mega mega chicken chicken ultra best test location in the southwest of England. This week what I thought I'd do is talk to you about how to choose a pick. Now instead of going through lots of different models, what I'm going to talk about is some general ideas as to what you can look for. And this isn't so much for off the peg stuff, although it will be important for that, but it's more for when you're looking into buying your boutique stuff because the biggest problem with boutique plectrums for the most part is not being able to test them in person before you part with your money. One of the things that I hear very often when talking about uh, boutique plectrums is that they cost more money, oh I don't want to lose them, all that sort of thing. The same can be said of any piece of musical equipment. Uh, I've spoken to loads of people who've left their guitars on trains, who've left their pedal boards in taxis, uh, and in those cases you might be talking about a thousand, two thousand pounds. In the case of your pedal board, it's really frightening if you start to do the maths. So PIX is kind of neither here nor there in that sense. Uh, I will also tell you that once you get up to the larger picks like this Iron Age Megalith Ultra, losing it is something you have to do on purpose uh, just because they are so huge. Uh, although you might spend a couple of pounds on a pick, or in the case of companies like Hofschmidt or Plextrum you might be spending, or even Stone Age, you might be spending 20 quid or 30 quid on a plectrum. The whole point of these picks, especially from these companies, is that they will last you for a very, very, very long time. And what you will come to do is you will come to get used to the fact that that is the pick that you're using. Spending £20 on a plectrum or even five or seven pounds on a plectrum really isn't that ridiculous. So with that in mind, I'm going to talk to you about my top five tips for choosing a boutique plectrum. Let's go. So tip number one, research. It's very very difficult to do research on certain things. Uh, for example, if you want to find out what ultra high molecular weight polyethylene is like, which is what a lot of boutique companies make out of, you just have to buy it. There's kind of no way around that. I looked at things like what artists were on the roster of the companies I was looking at, if they had indoor seas, um, what styles those indoor seas were playing, even if I didn't know them, um, any reviews I could find outside of my own website of course. One of the most important things you can do, which you maybe wouldn't think to do necessarily, is ask. Ask the company. If you want to know what a certain pick is like for tonality, that sort of thing, just hit them up and ask. The majority of boutique companies are very small. Uh, they're usually one-man shows or they've got a couple of people involved. And as a general rule, they're more than happy to answer your questions. The fact that you're wanting to get involved in their business is a big thing because if you get talking to these people, they'll be totally straight with you about everything. I've yet to come across anybody um, who hasn't been honest with me about their product. Tip number two is grip. Now, this is actually for me the most important thing. Um, although I have changed my attitude to it a little bit in the last sort of couple of months. The tone is, the tone, I'm not gonna lie, is important, but obviously, but the grip of the plectrum is fundamental. If you're gonna go and drop your money on uh, a pick, you want to know that you're not gonna drop it because it's your tool, it's what you're gonna use to make all your music with. The last thing anybody wants is to be on stage and be like, because that will put you in a difficult position. Now there's a whole load of different grips in the world. Uh, you have flat surfaces, you've got uh, debossing, embossing, uh, laser cuts, you've got uh, optic tubes, you've got um, concentric recessed circling, you've got um, signatures, you've got raised sections, all sorts of stuff. The best test that you can do is if you can get your hands on one, like if your mate's got a bunch of picks uh, and you want to test and see what they're like, put it between your index and thumb or your middle finger if that's how you choose to live your life and just rub a little bit. Now, if that pick feels like it's not going anywhere and you're not, I'm not talking about, if it doesn't go anywhere, you're fine. 
it's the easiest test. There are a couple of exceptions to the rule. Um, I have found that UHMWPE, our old friend, is the only exception to this. The reason being that it, that material is designed to work um, slightly differently. So if you get your hands on that, it will immediately feel like a bar of soap. Um, a hairy bar of soap, granted. But if you get that and rub it between your fingers, it will get warm, and once it gets warm, you're fine. Or, if you're sweaty, trust me on this, it's not going to go anywhere. Prior to that, especially if you're cold, it'll slide a bit all over the place. But that, that is the nature of the material. Um, once the grip is in, it's in. There are companies out there, like our good friends over at Monster Grip. You can go and watch my honest review of Monster Grips elsewhere at youtube.com slash heavy repping. Tip number three, don't forget who you are. Don't forget what sort of style you're doing. Don't forget what sort of music you're trying to make and how you play. If you are somebody that knocks the crap out of everything um, and you genuinely can't help yourself, might I suggest using picks under a millimeter. If you've got a light hand, bigger picks I always find is better. Uh, if you have a style that demands a lot of attack and aggression, then use a sharper pick. If you like to play acoustic and you like warmth and you like a good round, smooth sort of end like that, that will give you a much better depth than a pointed pick. Well, a pointed pick will give you better note separation, and better top end. A rounded pick will give you better bass response uh, and it will warm up that acoustic. I would never, for example, recommend using a really thin Dunlop nylon to play thrash, partly because you just won't get you just won't get the right sort of tone, and secondly, it will wear into a circle before you know where you are. So it is worth looking at what picks are being used by the players in that discipline, whether they're using thumb picks, how thick they are, the grip, and all that sort of stuff. So don't forget about that because that's absolutely crucial. Number four is material. Material is fundamental in Plectrum Choice. Part of the reason why it's so important is because other than the wear properties, which is always something you should look at, uh, it also determines, fundamentally determines what the tone is going to be like. Uh, if you have a super, 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 super sharp pick, but it's made of acetal, uh, it's going to have a slightly dull quality to it. Same with um, materials like stone. Stone's very breathy and bright, uh, but it does give a nice focused bass response. And then you've got materials like Altex, which is very, very hard. It's got a very punchy tonality. It doesn't have a lot of subtlety to it. And if you like that, then that's grand. I'm a big fan of Altex. I've used it for a long, long time. The Altex XL is a great bit of gear. Uh, but I will acknowledge that it's not good for some things. If I want to do something gentle or subtle, say on the acoustic, uh, using Altem is, it's like opening a can of beans with dynamite. It's just a bit excessive. Whereas you might find that thermoplastic suits your style more, or that you like a slightly drier sound, you don't want everything to be too wayward, all the rest of it. It will also determine, uh, although this is partly down to the actual ergonomics of the plectrum, it will have a big part in deciding how much chirp you get off your plain strings particularly. Uh, certain materials are better and better or worse for it than others. Polished acrylic is really, really bad for chirping, um, but it does also give unyieldingly fantastic grip uh, and pretty decent wear resistance. So, you know, there's, there's always going to be a trade-off. Uh, I have yet to come across I'm not saying that you won't do it, obviously, but I've yet to come across a pick where I've got it in my hands and gone, this will do everything forever, it's got the best wear resistance, it's, the, you know, it's got the most grip, it's got the best tone, and all of those things are in a line. There is always some sort of compromise, whether it is very slight or major, but again, what you'll probably find is that you will riffle through a whole bunch of picks and you will get something that you really like and then continue to use it. Tip number five is beveling. Now I know that that is not desperately sexy, but you are watching a guitar pick channel. It's very, very hard, not impossible obviously, but it's very hard uh, to 
really get down on a rounded tip when you're playing an aggressive style. If you look at the proliferation of, say, Jazz 3 players, or people who are playing Jazz 3 derived picks uh, in the extreme scene, even stuff like the Prime Tone series, which is much more pointed, uh, the beveling, i.e. the slopey bits at the edge, that is a really, really crucial part of how the pick's going to interact with the string, how much contact you have with the string, uh, how much chirping there's going to be, how it moves through from one thing to another. Certain picks are better for strumming and certain picks are better for um, single note working chords. It's just, it's just one of those things. In the same way that you could, if you wanted, take a strat to every single gig and be able to do just about everything with it, but there are certain nuances and certain approaches that it would struggle to do um, if you were doing jazz, for example, you can always play, you can make any guitar do whatever you want, really. Why would you not use the right tool for the job? If you need a hammer that is this size, but you only have one that is this size, get a hammer that's this size. I know it's that sort of thing of, well, where does it end? Well, it doesn't end. You have chosen the life of a musician, and that <laughs> that's kind of how it is. Like, you didn't buy your first guitar and say, cool, I'm done, that's me out. I'm just going to practice forever. I will say though that especially for those of you who want to do a lot of soloing or who like to dig in or have um, real economy pickers, uh, you'll find economy picking a lot easier if you have more sloped, sharpened bevels. Uh, this is a Chicken Picks Badass 3, uh, 2 mil, and it's very, very smoothly done with a point but it's not too pointy so it's going to give you clarity but it's not going to zing too much and the beauty of that is that you're wanting to move your hand as little as possible that will go through the strings right and proper if however you have something with a slightly more blunted edge it's all of that has to make contact with the string and go past it before you can hit the next string so if you think about how that feels and how that's going to work for you then it's kind of easy to see why it would help or hinder you in that instance. So I hope this has been of help when you're choosing particularly boutique plectrums but I would also encourage you, um, although I'm only one guy and I definitely don't play like you because no two people play the same what I can do is I can tell you what individual picks are like, so if there is a particular pick or a material or anything like that that you want to know about, ask. Just ask me. I don't get endorsed by any companies. Uh, I have good relationships with everyone, but I have good relationships with everyone, or I try to at least, so I'm not going to slant you one way or the other. The important thing is to find the right plectrum for you. It is not about there being better or worse plectrums out there. If you want to know about any of this, go to heavyrepping.com and just ask me. I'm more than happy to help you. So I will be back next week with some more news from the Plectroverse. In the meantime, uh, please don't hesitate to like, share and subscribe on the video. Uh, if you press the wee bell, then it does a bit more for the channel and I will do more for you. Um, I will also try my absolute best uh, to maintain this crazy one video a week schedule around my full-time job and radio show but I'm absolutely determined to do that for you if I can so there will continue to be uh, a brand new video every Friday morning and um, hopefully, hopefully uh, I'll be able to get the brand new website up and running soon or sooner rather than later so my name is John Tron Davidson this is Heavy Repping and if you're not sure what to do just remember, rep hard, rep heavy.